the papers for today. Okay, Let's see what we have on the uh, front pages and the stories in the papers today. But I'm enjoying this morning uh, to have conversations about what's going on in the news. Uh, by Vivian Kai Loco, who is the head of news right here at Channel One TV, as well as 97.3 City FM. Hi, Viv. Hello, How are you? you? I'm well. How are you? I'm super, super, super. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that we are twinning in blue? Yeah. Okay. I, I like the fact that I chose this blue this morning. <laughs> I felt strongly about it. You didn't come and spy. <laughs> so that was where well, blue. Giddy, giddy, giddy. I have my giddy, people giddy, in giddy. places. I have my ah, people so in places. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's go. Do you want to you want to start with uh, yes, with what I you can have? start. So yeah. I'll start with the Daily Guide. Mm. Um, a number of stories on their front page. Okay. Um, Baumia presents Napo to Otum for today. The mm. big story for today, and um, it says that the new patriotic party, that's the MPP's presidential candidate, Dr. Mahamadou Baumia, will officially introduce his running mate, Dr. Mati Opoku Prempe, to the Estantehene Otum Fosei to the second today. According to reports, there would be a grand deba of chiefs and people of Asantiman at the Nana mm. Efia Kobe Park inside the Menshia Palace to welcome the MPP presidential candidates delegation. Now, Dr. Baumia will seek the Asantehene's blessing, advice, and support as he and Dr. Prempe, affectionately called, affectionate, affectionately called Napo, begin to campaign for votes across the country. Now, from Menshia Palace, Dr. Baumia will then officially introduce his running mate to Asantiman and the entire country at the Jubilee Park in Kumasi, where a sizable crowd will converge. So it's a big one today. Mm, yeah. All roads, or everybody is yeah. actually from the MPP side at um, the Ashanti region today, Kumasi to be specific. And yeah. we will be bringing you a 360 on that, mm. both on radio and TV. So you want to keep your um, dial on City and then your you know, channel on uh, Channel One TV today. You know what I find interesting? <laughs> A lot of the imagery mm -hmm. in the last 24 hours with Napo mm -hmm. seems to show him smiling. You know, no, Napo typically, no, Napo typically doesn't smile really? in his photos. What do you think about it? Which all his images uh -huh. that, that are available online, he's hardly smiling. Uh, Napo likes people. smiling. But really? Yes. Oh, but it's more, it's just and the recent this, ones that I've been seeing that he's been smiling. And all that. Now so you want to say smiling. that because he's got the selection, oh, he's smiling. Oh, man, man. <laughs> well, so that, that's it from uh, Masham. But let me quickly uh, pick one or two, and then you, okay. you can go to your next. Um, GNPC floss ENR in $7 billion case, mm. still on the Daily Guide, and then also EC chair, IGP pledge, credible elections. Mm. Okay, so I have the anchor newspaper here, and it, it begins with the story, Napo officially outdoor today, which is what you were referring to in yours. Um, the, and I can't get away from it. I mean, I can't, we can't show it to you here, but he is really smiling. Look at that. It's just beautiful there. <laughs> <laughs> so the governing New Patriotic Party is set to officially adore the Member of Parliament from Asia South, Dr. Opoku Prempe, as the party's running mate for December uh, seven polls. Okay, so that story is in on page four of the Anchor newspaper. Now, there's a very horrific um, story on the front page here of the same paper. Um, two BECE candidates knocked down by speeding oh. car. You know, one dead and the other in critical condition. Really, really, really We're unfortunate. We're going to write the yeah. well, Which area yes. is it? Yeah, so the story here um, is... Let me just read briefly parts of it. So two basic education certificate examination candidates from uh, Kanuru uh, Basic School in the North Tong uh, district of the Volta region, so that's where they're from, um, have been involved in a, an accident on Sunday, July 7th, leaving one dead and the other in critical condition. Reports indicate that the students' names withheld were seen off their sister who had visited them in Volu, near wow. Juapong, where the two were knocked down by a speeding vehicle. Now the two injured candidates, the injured candidates were said to have been um, rushed to the VRA hospital in Akosombo um, in the Eastern region, where sad sadly one succumbed um, to their injuries, you know. And it's a sad one. Very, yeah, it's and, and the story goes on and it's talking about um, he, uh, the, 
this DCE, um, Divine Osborne Fenu, um, was making comments about the BEC students and he said he urged all BEC students to remain focused on their exams and not let, let the tragic um, incident affect their performance. Okay, well, yeah. well it will be a difficult one because mm. they are their mm. friends, friends, relatives, yeah. what have you, yeah. so it will be a yeah. difficult one. But, I mean, it, it's, it's a sad one. So we pray they, they are able to manage mm. that mm. and write mm. the exams. I'll still yeah. stay with the BC because on the Ghanaian Times, the president is talking, as you know, the students or the pupils. He says, um, avoid examination malpractices. President admonishes candidates for the 2024 BEC. Still on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, SNIT justifies sale of 60% shares in six hotels to private investors. Mm -hmm. Says it is only the option to resuscitate the hotels. We also have Promasador Ghana getting the highest international food safety certification. It becomes the first FMCG company to achieve the fit. Let me just do a quick one mm. on the SNIT um, story, story because okay. it's still running. This is the third or, yeah, the third week or fourth with this story, and it's not going away, especially based on the press conference we saw yesterday mm -hmm. by the DG, still justifying yeah. the moves or the processes to sell. We are told they've not sold it yet, so I'm not sure about the headline, but it says the Social Security and National Investment Trust SNIT has justified its sale of 60% of his shares in six hotels to a private investor, saying the move is the only option to resuscitate the hotels and help maximize their profitability. The hotels include the Labadi Beach Hotel, La Palm Royal Beach Resort, Elmina Beach Resort, Buzia Beach Resort, Trust Lodge, and Ridge Royal Hotel. Now, addressing a news conference in Accra yesterday, the Director General Kofi Busumpim Osafo Mahafu maintained that due process were followed in arriving at the decision for an investor to improve profitability, liquidity, and long-term sustainability of the scheme. Now, if you watched CNR yesterday, he went on to say that, you know, they've tried quite a number of things, including yeah. bringing, you know, people to manage these hotels, mm. and they realized that despite no, things were that, not working. But if you are, if somebody can come and manage yeah. it, and you feel that if you sell it, that person can manage it yeah. well. Then somebody can then manage somebody it can when manage you do it. your yeah, exactly. due process. So I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> and then the <laughs> issue about the Labadi be saying that because they are doing well, if they sell it off, they'll make some more profits. I'm still I don't not understand sure. that. But NPRA says, wait. Yeah. So hold on. Yeah, I mean, well, the, the, the finder has some interesting headlines in relation to this whole snake mm -hmm. thing. Uh, it says, Blaze bid failed at first stage therefore financial proposal was never opened mm -hmm. so there wasn't any discussion of finances he says here um well he go, the other comment here is that snit gained from the sale of grand regency so um yeah I mean, yeah like i was saying yeah. so if the, the, that one is doing good which yes. is a labadi beach case yes you know? and the blair one has to do with the former chairman of the yes. party yes yes his son apparently also made a bid his yes. father wasn't happy that um their bid, bid was didn't not work chosen, yeah the DG says. But then he says, the DG says here that we adhere strictly um, to the process as required by law. Spartan Eves did not meet the, meet the technical mm -hmm. criteria mm -hmm. and hence their financial proposal was never considered. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To say that SNED received an offer of 150 to 200 million and turned it down is inaccurate mm -hmm. because the offer was never made and the financial proposal was never opened. So it comes back to this um, morality point that has been yeah. made over, you know, the, this whole sale of whether uh, people related to the party, mm. that's the MPP, mm. or people in government yeah. should, you know, should be seen to seen, be involved. You know, yeah. You know, mm. uh, I mean, legally it's not out of place, but yeah. morally, is yeah. it right? So yeah. uh, the former chairman's son also showing interest in mm. bidding increases the discussion over the morality yeah. thing. But of course, the DG tells us that was never opened the envelope. I, I don't know if for us in our social construct and the way we do things, whether that's a premium, we, we put priority on that, you know. Um, we, are, we are big to say, uh, quick to say, and we are big on, you know, is it legal, is it not legal? But when it comes to the whole morality, morality ethics issue, the ethics, no, it's like it's almost like gray area. So it's like we are very loose. And because fluid issues of when morality and uh, you know ethics 
what you may see yeah. as you know not yeah. cool somebody may you see, see that as okay uh -huh. it's but like a know, subjective almost. yes it's, but, the, but they are uh, some clear lines you see when you even listen to both sides i remember yeah. during the campaign period mm. uh, you know the last two elections or so uh, president kufuado said that he he wasn't going to encourage yeah. you know persons in his government you know scrabbling mm. for uh, properties yeah. or stuff contracts within it. I government. remember that. Now, when you yeah. listen to um, ex-president Mahama mm. over the weekend as well, saying yes. similar things around that. So I think we are all clear with when it comes to conflict, you know, interest, conflict around yes. contracts, around property mm. owning, you know, and all that. But when it comes to the implementation, we then. find ways, you know, all of us, <laughs> to both ways. It, to when, when I want it, I feel, oh, it's okay, don't yeah. come and tell. When you want it. Yeah. So we should be clear mm. on if it's not morally yeah. right or ethically right, we mm. should just move away from it. But we'll see how this pans out because it appears that uh, Snit is bent on going ahead with this, with this press conference <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> anyway, let's, I have to take you back to the BC thing okay. because... Um, if I take you to the Daily Graphic, um, there's a story there that says slippers land BEC candidates in trouble. Hmm. And that's page 13. Let me go quickly to page 13 and see what the issue with the slippers is with regards to this BEC story. All kinds of interesting developments around. Now it says the dreams of 12 basic education certificates examination candidates of obtaining their first academic certificate nearly turned into a nightmare when they were almost barred from writing the first paper yesterday mm. at the whole Kabori GHS Center for wearing slippers instead of the prescribed cross sandals. To their surprise, the unsuspecting pupils were reprimanded on arrival at the examination center and instructed to go home after the English paper and come back better dressed for the religious and moral education paper in the afternoon. However, mm. the MCE, um, who happened to be at the center to wish the candidates well, stepped in to pardon the victims and extended the grace period today. Uh, reports um, Alberto Mario Noretti from who? Now, you know you are not supposed to wear slippers. Yeah. Why do you wear? But we don't know why they were wearing slippers. And why, did they, and why did the MCE step in? I mean, they, they wouldn't have gotten their, their certificates. You know, if you miss the first paper, that's it. You see, uh, what I find... So, so I don't know whether because of, um, you know, financial constraints yeah. or, or they were just being thrown out. I, I yeah. have to see, read the story, but, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, so we don't know if it's financial... But reasons, interestingly, you know. in relation to that, it says here, no shoes and belts in exam room. This is actually in yeah, so sandals. It's actually part of the same story. They are supposed to wear uh, sandals, not yes, slippers. Yes, exactly. And it says that. <laughs> so, meanwhile, candidates in the same district, that is the uh, North Tong district, um, have been instructed not to wear shoes mm -hmm. or belts mm -hmm. during their exams. Mm -hmm. Now, this directive issued, um, according to the officers from the Ghana Education Service, aims to curb examination malpractice. They were, however, allowed to wear sandals. Um, at the St. Kizito Senior High School, uh, one of the designated examination centers in the district, GES officials emphasized the necessity of strict adherence to this directive, um, and so on. So the story goes on there. Uh, some candidates have expressed discomfort and dissatisfaction, notice, noting that they are unaccustomed to wearing sandals and dressing without belts. They argue that these changes have negatively affected their comfort and concentration. So the sandals the is for the examination period, or is the everyday wear? You see, if it's, it's a difficulty okay. for me in the sense that you cannot introduce something like this just for exams. Mm. It has to be something they are used to doing. It's because of the cheating. When they wear the shoes, they stack in the papers in there. When they go to the exam halls yeah. with the pen and the yeah. cover, they yeah. put paper in the yeah. you know top yeah. of yeah. the pen. Yeah. The belts, they yeah. can hide things yeah. there. Yeah. You know, so th these are you yeah. know. Uh, and things they but do see, to stop them but from you see, cheating. But you see, Vivian, the way I look at it, uh -huh. the invigilators has to be the invigilation uh -huh. and our, and our uh, maintenance of high discipline among the invigilators. Uh -huh. That's where we can curb these uh -huh. things. Because you see, if an invigilator is going to do their job well, uh -huh. right, they will catch you. If you are cheating, 
let's assume they don't catch you. Fair enough. You won't catch everybody. Mm. But when you catch you, you are, you are, you, first of all, you cannot write the exam. Oh, but they know that you will, you when will, you are caught, you, you can't, con they know all these things. Yes. And the people still go ahead. But the so the first part is to read some of the, 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 the ways of <laughs> hiding, which is the shoe, this shoe like this. If you take it there, the thing no, 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 will hide yeah. this inside the so shoe. Where they that. So they start from a point, you know, the fence, okay. all these things. Okay, so do the students know mm -hmm. that when it comes to the final exams, we, we will not go in with belts? It looks like they know because reading further the the whole one it says that the the MC told them that they should stick with the regulation okay which has uh, which you have know been have been laid, laid down, down. So yeah they know you you left school when oh Why I told you? oh, oh, oh I told <laughs> you I, 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 I finished I finished school by entrance in eighty five uh, <laughs> ah eighty five please guys <laughs> listen away those who know know I think it was two years <laughs> after I finished school by entrance that the JHS was even JS, J, JSS at uh -huh. that time was even instituted. Yeah, yeah. so, so, so there are, I'm sure there are new rules yeah. because there are new tricks, new yeah. things coming up, ways yeah. to beat to the system. So uh, new uh, things will come up. No. We, we, you are old, so you will know, so please, <laughs> yeah. you know. Maybe your time, you just write one word in your palm. These no, days, no, the do know, do, doing, no, no, do you know how, do you know how, do you know how much, some of the cheating skills? You, you write, you use lemon, uh -huh. lemon, lemon. Uh -huh. uh, you, you dip. A stick into lemon. Are you confessing? No, I'm just telling you how <laughs> the tricks of the <laughs> trade. Because Richard, no, 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 no you can't do that, in Richard. It, it wouldn't work. <laughs> but I'm just showing you some of the things I discovered uh -huh. along the way. You dip a, a stick in lemon, mm -hmm. and then you write on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. When you when you look at the paper, there's nothing on the paper. It's blank. Okay. Right. You apply small heat, uh -huh. then it starts to show up. Because the lemon starts to brown. So when the you apply the heat, brown, when you, you, you find a way of heating hey, the it. Hey, you need Let me take it. <laughs> Bad boy. <sighs> to the BNFT, uh, on their front page, they have quite a number of stories. One says, agreement with Eurobond holders mm. confirmed by OCC. And then some interesting one on hospitality. Okay. Hotel occupancy declines in peak tourist season as airbnb business booms Shall it? let's go and do something airbnb, airbnb. You, apparently so the hotels are, have become so you know they've been expensive yes, for, for yes, some time yes, now yes, so yes. now quite a lot of people are moving into yeah. the airbnb to you know get accommodation i think first of all i think it's a it's a good thing that's happening because it will force our hoteliers to give competitive rates mm -hmm. right because vivian i don't know what your experience has been in your uh, many travels mm -hmm. around the world. But I find that Ghana hotels are very expensive. They're expensive. Very They're expensive. expensive. No. I mean, what you will get for a three star in Ghana, mm -hmm. in some countries on the continent, yeah. you will get for Even a five outside, star. outside, you know. But I think it's not just hotels, accommodation, yeah. land. Yeah. I mean, I was watching a documentary on real estate in mm. New York, mm. and I was looking at the prices they were yeah. mentioning, yeah. you know, uh, 10 million, 20 million, yeah. for a whole, you know, penthouse. Some of them were, you know, um, houses, whatever. And I'm looking at the cost of land in Ghana, in Ghana. airports. Yes. 5 million, yes. 10 million. Yes, and I'm just like, for the hey, land, there's no building and, on it. And in New York, <laughs> New York City, <laughs> Even New York is yes. seen as an expensive yes. city. Yes. And we are yes. competing. So yes. everything is expensive. But when you speak to the hoteliers, mm. they give reasons. Mm. They say there are loads of taxes. There's a, tax uh, there's a lot of cost around the operations, mm. which mm. keep you know, skyrocketing every day. So there yeah. are a lot of reasons. But like you're saying, it has to be competitive. If yeah. we want to be a proper tourist mm. destination, mm. we have to look at our rates, mm. find mm. ways to get everybody mm to have competitive yeah, rates yeah. so that we can pop up properly mm. in terms of the hospitality. So yeah. it's something, you I know, so. whoever is in charge should yeah, be Yeah, should, should do what they need to do. Yeah. Uh, do you have any more you want to touch on? APSL's Bonkra contract okay. was mutually terminated. Mm. There's a Ministry of Transport speaking still on the uh, BNFT page. Okay. And then VCTF leads charge to standardize PE VC valuation. And then finally, this one says climate response agriculture must be compulsory in new SHS curriculum. Climate change, do we even discuss it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you see, there are some things that are not important to Ghanaians at all. It's like it's like it should be important. Mm -hmm. But somehow 
we gloss over it and we just move on. When we go to the conferences, we'll sign every document that yeah, is there to be signed. We've signed everything. We've signed all, but we won't do it. Some people will be very happy with this headline here. Uh, regarding the sale of La Palma, Labadi, and others, SNIT rejects Rock City terms of payment. Hotel not still not sold. Okay, yeah. so at a point they say that, okay, can you give us bits of this? <laughs> yes, I can. Yes, I can. And so it says here, um, the SNIT um, has indicated uh, that it has not sold its hotels. The Director General Kofi Bosom Pim Osafu Mafo um, announced this at a press conference on Monday. This is the, the same conference mm -hmm. you were speaking of. According to the DG, uh, the negotiations have hit a snag as SNIT did not agree with the payment terms by Rock City Hotels, okay. uh, the preferred investor. Okay, so I think mm. the takeaway is mm. we're still going, well, we want to still go ahead mm. to sell, but mm. for now, Rock City mm. is not getting it because mm. we don't like their yeah. uh, preferred uh, terms of yeah. payment. Yeah. And then also from Marvel stand to we didn't you know, yeah. consider because it, yeah. it didn't meet the technical yeah. terms. So that's where we've gotten to. Okay. So, so we'll, 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 we'll continue with that and see what the minister, uh, or actually the MP who raised the issue, Ablaqa, will say to mm. the latest with regards to the, the negotiations <laughs> hitting a snag <laughs> with Rock City's yeah. own. All right. Well, that's it for uh, the newspaper review this morning. Uh, go over to chat1news.com as well as citynewsroom.com and check out all the credible news updates. Sports is next. Now on the sporting front, we have some sale of, um, you know, movement of players news. Blasters forward Antoine Semenyon has signed a five-year contract extension with English Premier si Premiership side AFC Bournemouth until 2029. Now, the 24-year-old made 33 appearances across all competitions uh, for the English side last season, scoring eight goals and providing two assists under their manager, Andy Irayola. Now, Semenyo's impressive form also saw him win the club's uh, Michael Matthews Jewelers Player of the Month award for November. Now, the Ghana International initially joined Bournemouth from Bristol City in January 2023. All right, some news on Euro 2024. The first semi-final of the 2024 Euros will take place after today in Munich between France and Spain at 7 p.m. The two teams had to come through tough respective quarter-finals test. Spain needed extra time to beat Germany 2-1 on Friday afternoon, while France held their nerve to beat Portugal 5-3 on penalties also on Friday. Spain will hope to repeat their 2-0 Euro 2012 win over France, while France are gunning to beat Spain like they did in the final of the 2021 UEFA Nations League by two goals to one. All right. 